Okay, everyone, welcome to a special two-part episode of uh, New School Republic Wrestling. I'm Petrie. And I'm Peck, and this is Petrie vs. Peck, WrestleMania 28. Okay, here we go. Now, here's why I think WrestleMania 28 uh, is going to succeed. Well, I didn't always think it was going to succeed. I At first, when they said the day after WrestleMania 27, that was going to be The Rock versus John Cena, I thought to myself, man, this is really going to be any good. We have a whole year to kill the, the hype. We have a whole year to hype up WrestleMania. How are we going to do this? And I did, really didn't think it would be that good. Did I even hit record? Yes, I did. Okay. Just checking. And I, thought, I was thinking to myself, how, we have a whole year to do this. How can we do it? And then you have the whole CM Punk thing. You have the whole Zack Ryder thing. Daniel Bryan. Mick, <sighs> Mick Foley came back. Yep. Okay. Um, Steve Austin. You still don't know where he's going to stand. Taker could do something. Could do something. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know what other uh, ace they have up their sleeve for uh, for the Rock. Dude, the Rock might pull out something absolutely crazy. I mean, this is his hometown. You might have the whole damn. You know, the the, the dude who ran the uh, uh, the uh, Kane Ponzi scheme might come in and do a run and do something crazy. You don't know what's gonna happen. And I think, especially after the whole same punk thing, anything anything can happen. And even though they've been sucking in, in the last few months, I still have I still have a hope that something really cool is bound to happen. Well, see, and here's the reasons not to watch it. For me, this goes all the way back to WrestleMania 27. I gotta say, which did suck. Right. I gotta say, and I know there's been worse pay per views. Like I know that uh, you know Breaking Point was pretty bad. I know Over the Limit was pretty horrible. But for me, the fact that that was a WrestleMania. And that it didn't deliver in many aspects is reason enough for me not to watch it. I mean, for me, it was the end of all the stars that I liked. It was the end of Edge's career. It was the Undertaker just failing abysmally to go yeah. in his match. And I based it on, I said, okay. A lot of people said that he wasn't going to go 20 and 0, so we're, we're even lucky we're getting that. Well, here's the supposedly. thing. Supposedly. Here's the thing with that, though. I based my entire watching it on whether or not who he would be fighting, and when I found out it was Triple H, I instantly lost all interest because there's nothing that they could have done in two WrestleMania matches that I haven't seen already that right. I care about. They're rehashing it, they're putting Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee. I don't care. And both of them were coming off injuries, too. Right. Which is one of the reasons they had to change it to a street fight. But um, but just for me, the whole... It's been trending so far downward. The only spike for me was in June or July when Punk completely went off script, went off the reservation, did his thing, became a legitimate main eventer, and then as soon as I found out, they ruined his push. And they tried a little bit. They tried feeding yeah. him you know, good wrestlers. He had a great match with Ziggler on Raw, but the problem was it was on Raw. I just don't feel like there's enough new stars, and I'm not going to be interested enough in anything related to John Cena to turn in to tune in. Yeah, they have Chris Jericho coming back to fight CM Punk, but for me, that match is not enough to get me to watch it. I, I hear what you're saying with that. I mean, they're probably all their eggs in the one basket, but they had a they have a whole year. They've never they've never built up one match a year ahead of time. Well, see, the problem for me is the WWE always does this, and so does TNA. They they try to rush things. They try to do everything early. Instead of CM Punk's feud with Triple H playing out over you know six months, it gets pushed into two. They fight. They team up. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. The Rock and Cena. They're supposed to be independent. What happens at uh, you know Survivor Series? Oh wait, let's let's team up, which they always do with rivals. Well, but they always did it. You know the, the night before uh, the, the Raw before Mania. It was right. always it was always the champions and versus elimination the and uh, they used to do it at no way out too. Yeah. At the same time though, it's like for me it would have been far more special if they didn't see each other for a year, and if they just went in cold, started cutting some promos. You know, they would have had to bring the Rock back for like a tune-up match or something because I can't believe that you know. Yeah, you're gonna have to put the Rock on the run for yeah. a little bit. You're gonna have to make him face um, maybe Cody Rhodes. You know, somebody Cody like Rhodes. that. Maybe even like Kofi Kingston. Yeah, just somebody that's like fast-paced yeah. and make it look like he's a little rusty, and then have to pull it out and be like, "Whoa, I haven't been here in a while." You know, one yeah. of those things. And, you know, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with Kane, but the problem is how long are they going to play this out? You know, what's going to happen? I don't know. I really don't know what's going to go on with Kane. I really don't. I mean, the only thing I can think of is they're going to plug him into the World Heavyweight title picture because I honestly, 
don't see Daniel Bryan representing anything in a championship match at SmackDown. And personally, I don't want him to be anywhere near that damn belt. I don't think he deserves it. I hate him as a person. I hate him as a gimmick. I can't get into him. He, there's nothing he can do offensively. You say everything. You say horrible things about Daniel Bryan. Now, see, I love Daniel Bryan. Okay, I think if you just give him a chance, I think if you give him a manager, he'll be leaps and bounds better. But he's a charisma vacuum, though. I can't, yeah. I can't look at him and take him seriously at all. It's like they gave the bagger at Walmart a title. What the hell is going on? No, wait, no, no. That's one that bagger at Walmart can sure. Oh, don't get me wrong. Match. Daniel Bryan could kick my ass in real life. I'm not disputing that. But I just, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't get into him and his little hot spots attire and just looking so generic. It's how you say generic, I think classic. No, he looks like every single indie wrestler that I've seen in every single promotion and I can't get into them either. I know, it's, it's classic because every other any other in, in, indie guy, you know, has something that pops. It's like, no, he has that classic old school Ric Flair Hulk Hogan thing. He has one color and he sticks to it, which is nice. Pebbles. He doesn't have anywhere near the ability, though. Ric Flair didn't make his entire career out of leg kicking somebody. It's because like Ric Flair couldn't leg kick someone. It doesn't matter. Ric Flair was still able to like with people his own size. He was still able to vertical suplex them. I haven't seen Daniel Bryan pick anybody up. Ric Ric Flair had the same match for thirty years, and they all involved the same three damn things: face bump, back jump off the top. And uh, what else? Was but in between yeah. that, there was some great stuff. Let me remind you, Ric Flair, Terry Funk, great stuff. I don't see that from Daniel Bryan. I he don't had a great match against The Miz. Yeah. He put over The Miz. He put over The Miz, and Miz was champion. Uh, I think that, that actually. Could, I think that. See, I think that actually helped The Miz. I think that actually helped legitimize his title run. That's one of the matches you can go back and say. Are you talking oh, about his U.S. title run or his WWE title? His run? WWE title run. It is like you can watch that Miz match. You can watch when uh, Miz was uh, WWE champion, and he fought Daniel Bryan on Raw. That's like one of the matches you watch it, and it's like, wow, I actually kind of buy Miz as heavyweight. As, Here's the uh, thing, WWE though, champion. I no because the Miz I only buy against people smaller than himself. When he fights John Cena, it, it's a struggle, and not even because of Cena's limited wrestling ability. It just doesn't look like he belongs. They had a ch- I, I, they had, I, I, I disagree with that. They had a chance to do The Miz so big, and he ended up having to go over dirty because of The Rock. It, it's it, but like Don't get me wrong. I, it's great that they're bringing in The Rock. That's going to get them a lot of attention because people love The Rock. But the fact that it took away from a main event world heavyweight title match, it would, and let me remind you, ended in a countout at one point. Yeah. The fact that they even false finished that bullshit with a countout at WrestleMania was horrible. That wasn't, you know, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, we need more time. That was a count out, and I was like, you know what? I'm perfectly content if this show's over. I don't care. Okay. All right. Oh, really? No. Okay. All right. I'm trying to think how I can play devil's advocate here. Okay. I mean, they had, they built him up so big. I love the promo video that they did of him, and it's like, why can't they just pull an Ultimate Warrior and have him beat their big face clean? I love that when he took the WWE title flipped it upside down and made the W and M. That was that was ridiculous, yeah. but it was awesome. And it He yeah. also did that on the mic. The yeah. Cardboard he did that. Yeah, that and the fact that, you know, just just that I've lost all faith in their pacing because the Edge World Heavyweight Championship match last year was first. Yeah. That, that was, was that his was last ridiculous. match. He knew it was going to be his last match. Why would you put that on first? That's a slap in the face to everything that man did for that company everything. That could have been after The Undertaker and Triple H. Who cared? Also, the one thing I definitely question on in the last few years is their uh, order of matches. I think whoever decides that, just like, hey, you just... Don't Sometimes just... they get it right. Michaels and Taker at 26, that definitely should have been the last match, and it was. That was good. Yeah. This year, it's almost like, if this really is going to be The Undertaker's last match, I know it's going to be seen in The Rock, but... Um. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, don't, I don't think they trust Punk enough to make the WWE title match. We know it's not going to be the world title match. Yeah. Um, They're not going to put Sheamus in that match. They're oh, not going to have him headline wrestling. That poor guy, poor Sheamus. Oh no, 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 no! But I mean, he's making money. He's selling he's, T-shirts. He, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's what? the Great Right, which would be an awesome gimmick for a white supremacist, and I laugh every time I hear it. But 
he, uh, you know, I mean, he's good. He's carrying SmackDown right now with Orton's injury and, you know, Barrett being a heel, you know, but at the same time, they're not going to trust him with that. They don't have enough faith in Punk. No. It's going to be seen on The Rock, bottom line. Well, the thing is, it has to be seen on The Punk because you've been building it up for a year. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just feel that, it, like, other things on the card are going to be victimized by that. I feel that that is going to perfect example. Last time Chris Jericho was in a WrestleMania main event, what, he fought Edge, what was it, 15 minutes, 10? It was horrible. Yeah. It was a you know it was a decent match that didn't give him enough time. I agree. Same Agreed. thing's gonna happen with him and Punk, which is gonna be the best match of the night hands down. I don't care what Sheamus does against Mark Henry or Kane or whoever he fights, it's not gonna be as good. I, I, I really I, I would like to know what um, Undertaker's opponent is. I think now it's going time. to be Triple H. They gonna, said they said that they said it's gonna be Triple H because Triple H like an idiot went out on live TV and he said, "Well, remember what I did to the Undertaker? You haven't seen him since WrestleMania." And then they were like, "Okay, you're fighting the Undertaker again." And I was like, "Dear Christ, really, really? You couldn't build up like Dolph Ziggler or Boyd Barrett, somebody I've never seen before. I had to have another rematch again." So even like Taker versus like Zack Ryder would be interesting. That'd be so out of left field. Only if they showed Ryder with like a new aggressive streak. Like what they did with Shawn Michaels against Mankind at Mind Games, when Michaels had to go to that dark place to beat somebody. I just, I, you know, see, is, is wrestling just, you can sell me whatever, I'll believe it. If it's fun to watch, I'll watch it. Okay. For me, it hasn't been, though. That's the thing. I've, I've been suffering for probably the last year and a half, just all the way across the board, every promotion, because there are just so many aspects of the show it's like it's like holding up a piece of cheesecloth there's just too many holes there's not enough segments of it to get me to care cohesively okay here's what I'm thinking here's my predictions I'm thinking in the Cena versus Rock match I'm thinking at least two run-ins at least two okay and the I think the Cena Punk match not Cena Punk Punk Jericho Punk Jericho I think that's gonna be higher up, okay. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna push that as one of the big ones. Might it might even be um, yeah, the triple main event. The thing that I don't know, yeah. The thing that I don't know is what. What do you put on first? Like, do you? I, I, you still I, have time to figure that out. And the thing is, though, there's so many things that are gonna jeopardize that because you're gonna have, like, say, you have Punk and Jericho. It steals the show, and you have that right before Cena and The Rock, and that's what everyone remembers when it's supposed to be Cena Rock, or you have Taker Triple H. Where do you put that? You know, it's like one of those things. It's like you have three great things. Screw the world heavyweight title. Who cares? And that's the other thing. You have to have Rock Cena last. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no way around. But yeah. I'm like worried about. Well, what if all the thunder gets stolen away from that? Like, what happens? You know? I don't think because um, I mean, I guess it's not possible because I mean, there's always going to be a huge amount of Cena fans and Rock fans. There's no doubt. Those are the two most popular people at WrestleMania. I can't dispute that. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, maybe Punk, but. I will say this. The most over people with real wrestling fans are going to be Punk and Jericho. Yeah. I think that's going to be the one people are going to be walking away talking about. I mean, they, they're they going to be excited over seeing a rock. The next down on Raw is going to be um, Punk, and Jericho. Punk and Jericho. It's going to be like WrestleMania 25. I barely remember the title matches. I remember Triple H and Orton just for Triple H's awesome sledgehammer entrance. I don't remember anything else. I just remember we beat the hell out of Orton the entire I, time. I, I remember that awful. I remember how excited I was because they gave you a rundown. It was, and you thought it was going to be was Orton, Orton winning, and it was. Or, or, it was Orton Vince, and then it was Orton Shane, and then, and then it was Orton, Orton kicked, the head yeah. Seth, kicked uh, Stephanie in the head, and then Triple H came running down. He didn't even say a word, just a look on his and just face. The like, I am going to kill you at WrestleMania. But You're the like, face gets oh. over, and then it's just like, yeah, this isn't what I want. In the first two minutes, they they both hit hit each other's finishers. Yeah. It's like, and I hate that. That's what I'm worried about. Like, they're not. I think they learned from that mistake. Really? I think every, I think, I think, every WWE pay per view and TNA pay per view that I've seen since then has just been a fucking finisher fest, just left and right. I don't think they're going to do finishers that early. I think they're th- I think that's going to be their finish. Punk probably. and Jericho won't. But I mean, the other matches. Come on, that's all we're going to see. I bet you the Rock kicks out of three attitude adjustments. I'm calling it over under three attitude adjustments. Three. Wow. Wow. Yep. That's a bold statement. And uh, he'll well, probably kick it. out a one over the top rope and just some kind of bullshit like that, too. Rock and Cena will kick out of two Rock bottoms. I'm calling it now. And I see, I'm gonna think, you have the run ins in on that, too. Do you? They're gonna do run in. Who, though? They can, they can get Steve Austin. Yeah, they can, but. I mean. It's like they should push him in ring talent. That's what's going to make me mad, because The Rock isn't yeah. going to come back consistently. 
That's my biggest problem with this WrestleMania. It's like, that's great. You're giving somebody a paycheck. Punk complained about it, too, and I understand where he's coming from. You know, The Rock comes back, doesn't say hi to anybody. You know, he gets over, he gets to win his match, goodbye. That's it. He's mm-hmm. in the main event. You know, it's, it's like one of those things. And mm-hmm. it's like, again, seen as the face of the company when he really doesn't need to be. But, I mean, he, well, I mean, for this one, he should. Because, you know, they've been building him up for a year. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can talk about the undercard, too. Now, one of the things I'm kind of I excited no about... I going to be on the undercard. Cody Rhodes and Dusty. They're talking about it. They're I don't talking know, about Cody I don't, and Dusty. They're talking about it, though. That's the problem. Teaming up or facing up? No, no, facing each other. Facing each other. Now, this, this would be father and son. No, 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 no. Cody and his older brother. Oh, Dustin! Yes. Oh! That's what I'm kind of excited about, but then I'm worried. I'm like, am I going to get Dustin Rhodes in all black, out of shape, and Cody Rhodes just kicks his ass? Like, like is that going to happen? Yes, yeah, so you, you really think Cody Rhodes is going to slow down his pace? Yeah, I don't... I don't. Because, like, I there don't, are a lot of matches on YouTube like that. Yeah, that. well, that and I don't think that... Uh, I don't think Cody Rhodes is going to halt his momentum. I don't think Cody Rhodes is going to, you know stoop to put over his brother who hasn't wrestled in WWE in two years you know that's what I, I think I think Dusty Dustin can still go I think he can but they're not going to, I don't I don't know that they're going to use him you know it's one of those things it's like yeah it's a it's a novelty and it'd be it, it, it'd, it'd be a nice little feud it'd be a good little match but because they love doing the brother 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 stuff yeah but at the same time it's like I just feel that somebody would be better off I think this might be the year they do somebody winning the money in the bank and then cashing in a mania but I don't I don't know who and I'm dreading who. <laughs> like it's like I don't I don't see any of those new stars on the horizon. Like I mean maybe Ziggler, but I mean his I, I feel like his time is coming gone. Hey, well, it used to be if you won Money in the Bank, or it used to be if you had the championship, it wasn't because you were in that belt. It was just uh, like a testing ground. It was just, yeah. They threw everything up against the wall. I mean that's why same with Sheamus was champion for a while. Sheamus was a good champion. Though. He was, and I I'd like to see him get the title again. I would too, but I don't. I don't know. So they might do that now. Yeah, that. Well, no. It seems like that their new time to try out their new toys is November up until like now. Yeah. Daniel Bryan, perfect example. Like they did it with Hardy, they did it with Edge, they did it with everybody. Like it seems like that's what they're doing with him now. Yeah. I don't. And, yeah. and you know, other than that, I don't know. I don't know who's going to come in. I don't know what they're going to do with Kane. I don't see any th- other option but to make him world champ now. Or be in the main event for the SmackDown belt because they need help. They need so much help on that show, unless they unify. But they're not going to do that this year. They're going to hold that off. They said, I think. Okay. Where the way they're going to unify? Unify. They they've been talking about unifying the world titles and doing just one. You know, everybody on the same show, which they're kind of doing. But I, I think they need two world champions. But you see, you have so much talent, you can't do that. Yeah, because of that and if seen as champion for seven months, people aren't going to watch it. Right. I think if we're going to do that. If you're gonna, you have to split. You have to split the shows, and maybe just add, just add ten more guys. Yeah, just make, something. Just do something. You need wild cards. There yeah. are hardly any wild cards in there. No, and it's like I, I don't know. Like I don't know. For me, it's just like so many of my people are gone that I, I find it so hard to get interested. That, put it this way, to get me to buy the entire show and watch the entire show is almost impossible. Yeah. No matter what they do, I mean, I only want to watch one match I have no interest in the Undertaker whatsoever especially if he loses to Triple H and that's who they give to break the streak no absolutely uh, not he doesn't need it no one needs it I'm perfectly okay with him retiring undefeated unless it's gonna be you, well first of all I don't think uh, you can't have anyone beat Undertaker to build them up no unless they that. are a sure fire next greatest thing ever the only person that I would have you need someone more popular than the Undertaker right you need need somebody I mean the only person that I thought had a shot would have been Edge when he was undefeated at Mania and if they would have made Edge darker and you know had him start doing stuff similar to the Undertaker like kicking out of people's finishers and like setting up if they made him like almost like the brood and they made him more like Sting or like you know in a way, like that would have been cool. Other than that, I don't know because, like, I don't want it to ever look back and be like somebody that's just like languishing on the mid carters. You know, have it be like somebody like Del Rio, somebody that's only going to be world champ like twice. That can't happen. Yeah, they can't have that feather in their camp. They can't. Uh, I I agree, um, but also at the same time, it's a sign of respect. Yeah, you can't take that away from Undertaker. No. You can't. 
after no, ni- but, after nineteen WrestleMania, more than nineteen years of service, and bailing them out, and yeah. being in the main event, he carried them from you know from Mania, I want to say twenty, all the way up until now, up well up until last year. Yeah, he's like he, he's always been for the longest time. Yeah, I mean even his even guy. even his match with you know Mark Henry, people were still interested. That was better than either horrible world title match. So yeah, yeah I mean you know. I, there's no one in my mind that can do that, that can yeah. end it. And also, it, it, it really is a respect thing. Yeah. And if they're going to, the only way they're going to do that to the Undertaker, if he was going to go to TNA or something. Right. And, there and just, he won't. I don't, he won't. I don't he, he, definitely, he definitely won't. No, because people have thrown money at him from different promotions and he never went. He never took a dime. He never went anywhere else. He's just like Shawn Michaels, only has more integrity, honestly. Yeah. You never heard about him being a pillhead or being a dick. We're not putting somebody over. Worst thing he's ever done is a whole Sarah tattoo thing. That and that was weird. I mean, some guys uh, uh, sleeves like that. <laughs> he's that's not on record. Oh, if I'm gonna get married again, I hope I get married to someone that named Sarah. One of my favorite casual Undertaker moments. I was watching his match with Muhammad Hassan, and I remember Muhammad Hassan punched him and he hit him too hard. Oh. And the Undertaker just turns, looks at him, and just fires off just a half speed but full cocked fist punch. And Muhammad Hassan just folds up. He just falls in three segments. His body goes, his knees buckle, and then his legs just kind of, his Achilles tendons just go. Yeah. See, one thing I'd like to see, I like. I hope this is going to be the ticker finish. If he fights Triple H, I hope it ends with the triangle. It already did. He, he did that? That's how he beat him. That's Last why, I, yeah, I want to see I, one. I want to see it again. I want to see I one. I want to see one more tombstone. Oh, if yeah. he's going to go out, it has to be a tombstone. The only way you do a, t- a tombstone is with, like with Kane. You have to have someone you can trust. Well, yeah, I mean, well, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, he did it with he did it with Michaels. He did the jumping one to Michaels. I'm like, oh my god, he killed him. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. I'm like, he never did that to anybody before. I don't know how he didn't break Michaels' neck. But yeah, no, no, Triple H, yeah, the 26. He beat him to a pulp, and he laid there. And Triple H went out to the like ropes. He got the hammer. He came back in the ring. And the Undertaker lay there like a slug. It was his only defense. <laughs> And he made like he was going to hit the Undertaker in the face when he was on the ground. And the Undertaker, like, grabbed his arm, threw up the leg, threw the other one behind the head, and choked him out. My favorite Undertaker match, honestly, aside from the one against Kurt Angle, No Way Out, Edge. WrestleMania 24. That was my that was the best match I've ever seen from him. Um, I'm going to go with the first Michaels match. I forgot Orton, too. Orton 21. That was really good. Yeah. The choke slam into the RKO. I really like the Michaels match because they, I mean, you could tell they were just tired. Yeah. But if you're going two minutes before you do anything and the crowd goes nuts when you do do something, yeah, you're doing something right. And the dive over the top rope where he landed on his neck. Oh my god, that's frightening. That and the, uh, I gotta say though, the the build up for 26 was the best build up I've ever seen. The promo package with that song "Running Up That Hill" by Placebo. Yeah. And then. The entrances themselves. Michaels came out, it was all happy, and then you just had the Undertaker rising from the thing. He had that awesome like hood thing. That was kick ass. But this year, I I just feel like he's deteriorated so much and the Undertaker is my favorite superstar that it's almost like I don't want to watch this WrestleMania for fear that it's gonna cheapen my memories of what a wrestler he is. I don't want to remember him for WrestleMania twenty seven and WrestleMania twenty eight. Uh, um... I'm afraid of that. But at the same time, we're talking about Mark Calloway. He's not going to do anything to let you down. He, he hasn't done it before. He hasn't. But the problem is, Triple H hasn't done anything to bring me up in eight years. Nothing. He hasn't done a damn thing for me. But I can't stand him. But Triple H is healed this time around. He was healed the last time. If you fight no, the no, Undertaker. healed, healed, healed. He's, oh, he's not as banged up. He still hasn't wrestled in four or five months. He hasn't wrestled since he fought Kevin Nash. But he can't move. He can't move. But like, I'm just trying to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I, the, the the biggest thing is, I mean, Shawn Michaels made a great point. He was talking about how rematches cheap like cheap and feuds. He was talking about one of the ones he saw back in like the Texas wrestling promotion, and he's like, I tuned in. The match was great, and then. 
they decided to do a promo for the Menorah match. He's like, I didn't want to see the Menorah match. I was perfectly happy with the match that I saw. I didn't need to see the same thing again. And that's my biggest problem with WrestleManias lately, is that it's been, yeah, The Undertaker's 20 and 0. But how many people did he fight more than once? Kane? Taker three, to, or, you know, Triple H three times now, and Shawn Michaels twice? No. No. I'm sorry. No. So, okay, who, who's your dream opponent be? I don't think Besides there, Sting. I don't think there is one right now. And Sting was never my dream opponent. I mean... Really? Not for not even Stanger? No. Really? No, well, I mean, in the earlier incarnations of Sting, yes. Okay. This, so we're this we're generation... Like WrestleMania, no. um, like, is seven you're talking no, about? No, 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 no. I mean, well, I mean, I would have been cool with Sting up until 2006, 2007. Okay. Sting now? No. Absolutely not. I mean, from pure nostalgia and awesome, you know, like, thing... I always thought the greatest potential opponent for The Undertaker would be Raven, but they could never pull that off at WrestleMania, because Raven just... Yeah. yeah Denim jeans do not fit into WrestleMania, you yeah. know? It's just one of those things. For me, Austin and Mania would have been great, just from, you know, sheer, like, what they could do. I thought, if you want to say CM Punk's the best in the world, now, if he's your hottest thing, what do you have to lose by putting him against The Undertaker? He's obviously not going to beat him, but people would remember the match. Yeah. You know, him... Because Punk, Punk's a good enough wrestler, wrestler that it'd be believable. He, he can slow down his pace just enough. Yeah, and he can still hit his rapid offense. I mean, honestly, like if Edge had been healthy, I'd say Edge again. But th- to me, that was my favorite match. So I, I don't know. I mean, and could you imagine the build up for Punk Taker? Or you know, I mean, it would have been nice. just standing there, no selling the Undertaker. Yeah. And be like, I'm not scared of you. I'm Phil yeah. Brooks, and I don't care who you are. Like, something like that. Or make it in front of The Undertaker saying, like, he watches Twilight or something. There's something no one has ever done. Yeah. I'm just, or... If Steam Punk is pretty much un- unlike anyone The Undertaker has ever been. Just from, like, a sheer, like, factor, you know, RVD against The Undertaker. That yeah. would have been kick-ass. Even though they would have been much better for a summer feud and a hardcore match, you know, something like that. I wonder who we can bring up from uh, the Hall of Fame. Who could, who could, who could fight Taker? Psycho yeah. Sid. Psycho, yeah, that'd be great. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be any better than WrestleMania 13, but it'd just be awesome from a sheer Psycho Sid is kick-ass standpoint. In the earlier years, I would have just loved to watch The Undertaker just murder Hulk Hogan. That would have made my dream come true. I, I hate Hulk Hogan. Yeah, no one really from the Hall of Fame that could go now, but still. No. Um, a lot oh, Johnny are... Rod's not kidding. Oh, no. Oh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Schnucka. Re- redo Steamboat? Yeah, oh, Steamboat. Yeah, it would be. It'd, yeah, be, it'd be so. Like, it'd, it'd be really slow, but like, yeah, that'd be no so shit. methodical. I don't know. I mean. Yeah, that's a good one. But we're back in the day. Bret Hart against The Undertaker at Mania. Yeah. That was a few that. They had like, what, three matches in their career? And then one of them was at SummerSlam, you know, the controversy thing. That would have been cool, but it's like. Now I don't see, like, that star that could go that has the wrestling ability. I thought Kurt Angle. If they would have made, actually, yeah, that would have been my dream. If they would have made No Way Out the WrestleMania main event, we would have had no complaints. But, you know, Eddie Guerrero had died, and they had to throw the belt on uh, Mysterio. But, yeah, this, uh, uh, just to sum up my points, this year's WrestleMania, I just, I'm not excited. I don't care. I've been so disenfranchised with the product that I'm afraid to put my hopes in them for this biggest pay-per-view of the year. I know all my friends are going to watch it. I know there's going to be food. I can't bring myself to get interested. Well, you should bring your, you know, I mean, there's going to be, like, dominoes and stuff. I mean, that's always good. There's going to be, like, wings and I mean, boxes. I'd rather it's watch it. It's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, food. I've actually you never... You hang out with me? Well, no, here's the thing. Damn. I've never watched it with you guys. And, I, you know, if you guys get it, I'll watch it with you guys. But, okay. you know, like, my other friends, I just... Uh... Okay. Uh, my point is, is that we haven't even started the road to the Royal Rumble. We haven't even started that. I mean, I'm looking that up. It's supposed to be uh, January 29th. That is the worst poster for the Royal Rumble I've ever seen. Who is that? Who Santino Marola. Santino. He's a fortune teller holding a ball. ball. No. By the way, oh, you want to know why I can't take the Royal Rumble seriously? He was the last person thrown out last year. <laughs> Poor guy. And it's going to be a 30 minute match. Hey, he almost won. And it was hilarious. I got I gotta go back and watch it. This is the 25th. Yeah, Del Rio threw him out. Del Rio threw him out. Del Rio should never, never should have won. Oh, hey, at least he didn't beat Edge. If he would have beaten no, Edge, I was going to go home and never watch wrestling again. Because I was I was just like, they can't make this guy champion right now. They needed to build him up more. I'm like, he hasn't done anything. Nothing. 
Yeah. Not a damn thing. He didn't beat anybody but Rey Mysterio up until that point. One guy. That was the only guy he fought. I think, I think, you, you, as soon as you start talking to the road of WrestleMania, and we start getting into it, really getting into it, I think it's interesting now. Really? There's a lot of, there's a lot of Really? Potential. With how shitty the writing has been. The road to WrestleMania. The road yeah. to WrestleMania last year was awful. The Undertaker and Triple H. They came out. They didn't say a word. They had two video packages. They came out. They returned. That set up their match. Big deal. I I, I know what I said before about too many cooks uh, spoiling spoiling the stew, but now you have a lot. You have a lot of the wrestlers. You have the you have the older guys coming in. No, you don't. You have the Rock coming in. I. You have the Rock coming in. Saying, yeah, you and have, he still has swag. He still has pull. He he's like, really hey, popular. He'll be good right here, Steve Austin or Mick Foley. Just yeah, Foley's yeah. there. Okay, yeah, but it's 2012, and the fact that they can't come up with any of their own people when they have wrestling talent and they can't get them over is such a disappointment to me. That's my biggest problem. It's, it's January 15th. Now I say in 15 days we're all going to be pleasantly surprised because something's going to happen. Something's going to hit the fan. Unless like, they change the Undertaker's opponent, I don't care. I think it's going to be something really interesting. Really Who interesting. though? Who could it possibly be in WWE that anyone would care about? Well, I just, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know it's the scene. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to seeing the Rock. Yeah, we know it's going to be Cena versus Cena versus the Rock, but there might be another element tossed in on top of that. And honestly, you know, this might be part of my problem too. It might be a house of cards. It's going to be a, definitely going to be a house of cards. Well, no, no, no. Here's the thing too. I gotta say. Oh. I was never a rock guy. Never. I, I was never a rock I, guy. Either. I mean, and I'm, I, I got to admit, I'm honestly still not. I'm not either. I mean, I, I'm more of a Cena fan than I am the Rock. Oh, I don't see. For me, I don't like either one of them. It's like watching two forms of hepatitis fight each other. I just don't care. I gotta go see. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go see. I mean, over, like over uh, D Dwayne. Yeah, I mean, I always thought the Rock. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's a great hype man. Awesome on the mic. Nobody builds up a match better. But when it actually comes down to it, it just doesn't do that much for me. Um, yeah, I'm going with you. Yeah, 15 days until the Monday night after Royal Rumble. And who has he really put over? Who? The, all I remember is The Rock beating people. I don't remember The Rock losing to that. Yeah, The Rock kind of had a, um, this Mike Awesome kind of way of doing business. But uh, just, just you wait. Just you wait, Peck. I'll show you. We'll see. I think, I think you might win. It's not oh, like it's not like I have TNA to preoccupy me and be any better. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just watch. Uh, <laughs> you know what, WWE Brandon? While you're on your way to Bound for Glory, I'll be. Or while you're on your way to WrestleMania, I'll be on the road to. Um, oh, what is the what is the pay per view in March for TNA? Um, turning point. What? Victory Road. I'll be okay. on the road to Victory Road. And okay. I'll, you know what? I'll probably hang myself I on the way there. I'm still gonna do that Super Bowl bet, which I lost. We can't do... Oh, yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll, we'll think of something. We'll think of something. Oh, matter of fact, that brings up a perfect analogy. This year's WrestleMania to me is like this year's Super Bowl. The Packers aren't in it. I have no horse in this race. I don't care. I really don't care either. If it's the Harbaugh Bowl, I refuse to even turn on my TV. Bottom line, I don't care. If the Patriots want another ring, great. I don't care. I don't want to see that. I hope, you know what? Go Eli Manning. I hate all the other teams. Yeah, I like, I like Eli. Yeah, I mean, he's the I'm, only... I'm bummed that the Saints lost. So am I, because I wanted a good game. Yeah. And they actually can play defense, believe it or not. We're going to get the Giants and 49ers in the NFC Championship. Mm-hmm. That ought to be inter- interesting. <sighs> only, if the, only if the Giants win. I do not want to see the Niners. Um, I don't care. I just want the I just want the NFC to win now. Yeah, same here. Well, on uh, on that note, that was Petrie versus Peck. On WrestleMania 28. And to some extent, Daniel Bryan. Woo! Good night, gang. Later. Oh, and uh, part two will be coming up just a little bit with Chris Schultz on his thorough, in-depth research. The Chris Schultz expose on the WCW invasion. Couldn't have said it better myself, even though I tried and failed miserably. Here we go.